I made it up to Music Row. Lordy, don't the wheels turn slow. We are the Y'all Show. Talk with an accent on Nashville and more. And we've had a very busy last couple of days on the Y'all Show. And so what better way to wrap up the week than to be on Music Row and have a great time, a place I'm sure many of you have come and enjoyed while you've been a, a tourist in Nashville. If you're lucky like me, you've actually worked right here on 16th Avenue back in the glory days of the 90s when everybody was making millions of records. But we have a special treat. We're not just here with our cowboy hat on to wrap up the week in Nashville, Tennessee. We are here to go on a little golf tour. And you know what we're gonna do? We got the guitars in the background. We want you to come around and come along for the ride here on Music Row as we're gonna spend the next 30 minutes or so on a golf cart tour of Music Row, courtesy of, let me switch this camera around, courtesy of this guy right here. That right. is Cowboy Kid. We're here on Music Row, everybody. It's time to get down and learn about this town because people come to Broadway, they drink, they get drunk, they fall down. But this is the real deal. This is Music Row. This is where the music's been made for four and a half decades. Uh, it started in the early 50s and it extended till now. And literally, this is where it all goes down on this row right here 16th right. and 17th. 16th and 17th. Parts and of 18th and uh, different side streets. And we're going to learn a little bit of history here. And that's what we do on our golf cart tours is that we learn people, we teach people. Uh, we learn from them too because we run into artists all the time, we run into producers and writers, and you never know who's going to end up on our golf cart. But right now we're happy to be with y'all.com and uh, let's learn some stuff about Nashville. And this is part of our southern swing of the south, and we're going to just do it right here on Music Row in Nashville for the next 30 minutes or so. And if you have a question or comment for Cowboy Ken about anything here on Music Row, Go ahead and ask it right there in the comments. Also, please make sure you like our page and subscribe on our YouTube page. And one thing, you know what? I'm going to promise people, Cowboy Ken, while we're here in Nashville, yeah. we're going to see stars. I promise you. I guarantee you. In fact, I can guarantee you that you're going to see Lee Bryce and Carly Pierce, who just had the number one song, I Hope You're Happy Now. And I can go ahead and show off. Lee Bryce, he's over here waiting in the wings. Are you ready for me to show he's, off? He's right over there. He is. There he is. Look, there's Lee Bryce. But we got Carly Pierce we're going to show y'all too. That's Curb Records. That is the, the actual record label. And that, hey, hi y'all. And that is the home of Lee Bryce. And that is, that, that's the home of that uh, great recording artist from Sumter, South Carolina. All right, there's the golf cart. Cowboy Ken. And we're going to start off at this actually location right here. In addition to Lee Bryce, Tim McGraw was probably the most famous guy on Curb Records. He started off with Indian Outlaw and uh, Don't Take the Girl, where his two number one hits right at the start, and that catapulted him into the next level of country music. He started out busking on the corner down here with Kenny Chesney. But right here behind us, we have Curb Records Studio, oh. and this is where Leanne Rimes recorded the song Blue. Uh -huh. So when she was 13 years old, and that's where she started, and several other artists. We've got the art guitars here, which are the tribute to Elvis and to Roy Orbison. We're gonna see in a minute where they all recorded that. And uh, come along with us, and come right, ride on the golf it. cart. Also over here across the street is Curb, Curb's office. At, at the time that Tim McGraw was signed, that was the main Curb Records office right there. And this is, what is this technically, this street right here called? I don't see a street sign. Is this Music Square or something? This is Chet, Chet Atkins Boulevard. Chet Atkins Boulevard. Yeah. Okay. Oh, competition over there. Golf carts everywhere here in Nashville. But this is the one this you want to be, be on. on. How do people find you, Cowboy Ken? Uh, we've got a, a new website. Well, Cowboy Ken on Facebook with a K. So it's Cowboy with a K and Ken with a K. And we've got a new uh, website coming out on Monday called tour-nashville.com. And so you can find everything about Nashville tours. We also do tours and vans. We take you around. Our main go-to is the golf cart tour. It's been nominated for awards, and, and uh, we're very proud of it, actually. And we, you, you never know who you're going to run into. And people leave here, and they go, this is the best thing we did. Getting off of Broadway, coming out onto Music Row, finding out what actually 
goes on to make music in this town too. Now, Cowboy Ken, we're y'all, and we're all about the South. We're all y'all. We are y'all. But you know I got to ask the question because I'm kind of an expert on voices. Are you from Canada? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Canada. Busted. But I'm busted because when I say out and about and fish for trout, <laughs> then people know I'm from Canada. But, but southern Canada, right? So you're a yes, good southern boy? Southern boy from Canada. Yeah, that's right. But, All right, let uh, me hop on the back here and we'll let let's Cowboy... Get, let's take the golf Look at this fancy ride. I mean, this is going to be fun. And again, if you got a question or comment about Music Row, you got something you've always wanted to know about what's the music and the magic that happens here in Nashville, Cowboy Ken is our guy. So, Cowboy, All right. as the Dixie Chicks would say, Cowboy, Cowboy take, me, take away. me away. All right, the cool thing is that within one or two or three blocks, so much music has been made in this town. Again, up there is Lee Bryce. Hey Lee, great song. And he's got a new one out too called uh, For the Curls or something like that. All right, lights. We've got Jimmy Allen over here. There's Jimmy, see ya. We told you we're gonna let you see the stars. Matt never heard of him, but he never done the road from home soon. What is this building, Sea Center? Ah. Sea Center, they royalties for music. This is the CMA Association. They put on the award show every year and a festival every year. And uh, it's a, really a tribute to the artists, the CMA Festival. They all play for free and they donate back to the Country Music Association. I'm gonna do a, a 180 here. We're heading up 16th Avenue. If you turn southward, that's back toward Belmont University in case you want to look on your you map. See, show right over there the deck of records. Once in a I see it, but you can actually see a portion of it on the back yeah. side of that. Decker Records and Quonset Hut was the first record company to actually start up a music row. And if you see this sign right here, you're going to see that you've got Patsy Klein, Brenda Lee, Marty Robbins. And go down further, you got Johnny Cash, Bob Dylan, Roger Miller, George Jones, and Abby Wynette. And Patsy Klein actually recorded all her hits like crazy and everything like that was recorded in this location. That's crazy! That's crazy. And actually, That'll be the day my buddy Holly was recorded here in that Quonset Hut. We're going to go see the back door of it. That's where the stars would have entered. And there still is a hut, but it's surrounded by modern... You can still see that little corner of it. Or you could, but so much has changed right here, so I better shut up. It changes on a daily and weekly basis. As far as... The history doesn't change sometimes, the buildings are different. There it is. There's what we're talking about. That right yeah, up there by the air conditioning unit, you can still see the outline of a Quonset hut, which got its fame from being in the military where they built were built on insulations around the world. They're actually built in Rhode Island. I had an artist on my golf cart who lives in Quonset, Rhode Island. And that's Is where that they right? made all the huts from that actually became famous around the world. But the Bradley brothers, Owen and Harold in fifty five decided they were going to add on to their offices and create a, a legendary studio and be able to film TV shows in there too. Hope you're enjoying this, our tour of Music Row. Somewhere right through here was Ronnie Millsap's office. Is it still here? Uh, it is not actually, okay. unfortunately. But right over here we've got uh, Black River Entertainment and Scott Hendricks was the lead guy for the longest time. And uh, There's Black River. Scott Hendricks is a major producer. He uh, also had a receptionist named Faith Hill, who was right through those doors working at the desk. At this was, building, right? The one on the right. Oh, right over here. Sound, okay, that building. Sound stage. And uh, Faith was 23, and she was in there working really hard. And they, she's a beautiful lady, and they gave her voice lessons and taught her how to sing. And eventually, she became engaged to Scott Hendricks, and then. He put her on a tour with Tim McGraw, and the rest is history, as they say. You're leaving out a lot of that story. Okay, there, you can fill in the rest, though. There's a lot There's a lot in the middle. But, uh, there's a lot before. Uh, yeah, Faith Hill was married before. And, uh, well, Scott left his wife to be with Faith. Right. And then she dumped him to be with Tim McGraw. <laughs> it's crazy how it goes. That's a country song right there, y'all. That, that is a country song. Uh, Something about this hat's making me goofy, I'm sorry. More recently, Kelsey Gilbert Ballerini has recorded all her albums in here. And Scott actually discovered Keith Urban in a bar in South Nashville and uh, bought him for $50,000 from another record label. I didn't know that. Keith Urban or Chris Gaines? I'm kidding on that. Chris Gaines was Garth Brooks. I know, but he was based on Keith Urban. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Keith Urban was the influence behind. Oh, that, see, I'm learning. Games. I'm learning on these well, tours. You know, they were label mates at the time. And, right. And that's how that happened. Garth Brooks was a shoe salesman in uh, downtown Nashville, and he was singing demos. He was living in a basement apartment, and uh, his neighbor was Major Bob. Major Bob decided he wanted to invest in a country artist, and he picked Garth Brooks based on one song, which is much too young to be this guy old. Still my favorite Garth Brooks song right there. I'd say it is, and it, it gave tribute to the legendary Chris Dew. A typical golf cart tour with you lasts how long? Uh, we can go ahead with 60 to 90 minutes. Depends how much you want to see. But, uh, there's more than enough to fill up a 90 minute tour. Uh, that's Warner Brothers over there. That's Rick Lake, Rick Lake Shelton, Kenny Chesky, uh, Austin, That was a mid 90s build on that building that was built somewhere around 1996. And if we've got any Elvis fans in the house, we're going to uh, tell you some Elvis history here right now. If you're an Elvis fan, hit us up, like us, tell us your favorite Elvis slash Nashville story. If you look down this back Nashville lane sport. right here, this is the lane way that they brought Elvis Presley down. And uh, they would take him down, there'd be a whole entourage of people. And there's pictures that we're going to get posted on our website of this exact lane way with Elvis's Cadillac. It's a convertible. And Elvis was standing by his convertible, something like this, and he had his military outfit on, and they took the pictures, and that same building and the same stairways in the background to this day. And the funny thing is, why was he in a military uniform? Because he literally came here straight from Germany when he got out of the army. Yeah, and he uh, wanted to record some songs. He was so anxious to get a recording, he didn't even take his uniform off. But also that same building over there was in the background, too. Good this white building you can you can compare as the spa guy i gotta give him props guy, yeah. he did a great video showing how that video right over there was still there and, and you can see the the windows and the bushes in front of it from the i guess 1960 is that that was actually uh in the sev early 70s uh elvis came back from the war and you can see that sign is still the original sign it's the uh, rca victor studio uh -huh. Day after Elvis passed away, they closed the doors and they basically have a shrine to Elvis inside there. You can do a tour of that and range through the Country Music Hall of Fame. Do you know who was in that building recording on the day that Elvis Presley died? I do not know. My favorite artist, and he was recording with Chet Atkins, Steve Warner, recording his oh. very first work, was in RCA Studios recording on We're August gonna drive past the 16th, sign that gives 1977. Credit to all the What's that? We're going to drive past the sign. We've got Charlie Pride actually started out in there. He was the first man of color to uh, be accepted into country music and he recorded the song Kiss an Angel Good Morning in there. This is the wall here, this is Studio A that was built to accommodate all the other artists that wanted to record down here and Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton famously drove through the wall right there. I don't see a wall, where are you talking well, about? Well, they replaced the brickwork but okay. she actually drove her car into the wall and broke part of the wall because she put her uh, foot on the gas instead of the brake. Women drivers. Just kidding, Dolly. Just kidding. That was me that said that, not Cowboy Ken. We are on Music Row. If you're just now tuning in, by the way, we need to check our Facebook feed there, Cowboy, and make sure we're cooking good. And if anybody's got a question or comment or criticism, we, we'll take that here. We'll take anything. We'll take anything. Tips? Yeah. Y'all.com on Facebook is where we currently are. And if you have a question or comment, it's so good to come down here. And this concept of being on Music Row on a golf cart is a little bit new to me. I've seen these golf carts. I didn't quite understand that you could take a tour, and now I know. So pretty, pretty yeah. neat stuff. Pretty neat stuff. Okay, cowboy, I'll check this while you get to our next location. Corner right here, you're going to see some of the names that have recorded in this studio. Good news is it's not 105 degrees. Bad news is it's a little rain here in Nashville today. If you see this, uh, 
this sign here, that tells us some of the history of artists that have uh, recorded in here. And basically, everyone from Roy Orbison to Dolly Parton and Charlie Pride and Jim Reeves started out in this little studio. And eventually, they were moved down to the next studio over. And Elvis Presley basically took over the whole studio. But you've got some legendary stuff. And Chet Atkins is one of the most famous producers in the world. And apparently he fired Elvis a bunch of times, and Elvis would fire him, and then they'd get back together again. They sort of had a love-hate relationship, but both of them needed each other. Now this is called RCA Studio B because RCA Studio A is a couple of blocks. It was in a where what is now a parking lot, and that's where Heartbreak Hotel was recorded at. And then it was taken down for some reason, and they came over here on Music Row, and that really created the buzz and the vibe down here because you had the, the studio Columbia Decca Records over there and they had Elvis coming in here and it basically created the energy that wanted people to come down here the publishers the record record labels you had the booking agents uh, right over here we can see a lot of the spin off of that we've got Carnival Music that was started by Frank Liddell and he uh, signed an artist named Miranda Lambert out of Texas and has done very well with her but he's got a lot of Great songwriters, uh, my friend Mondo Saez uh, writes out of there. I've written in there before. They have a bar in the top called Barnival that a lot of the writers sit around and talk in and write songs. We've got, uh, across the street, we've got Doc McGee. Doc McGee is a famous rock and roll manager, Bonley Crew, Bon Jovi, and to this day, he's the manager of KISS. So that is the headquarters for the rock band KISS. Also Bob Dylan, and he, Help discover Darius Rucker and turn him into a country star from uh, his Hootie the Blowfish days. So let's get on the cart and we're going to see a couple more things. Some people come to Nashville to be a recording artist. Cowboy Bob. Well, that's Cowboy Ken. Cowboy Ken, you're talking about Major Bob. Cowboy Ken, he came to Nashville not to be an artist, but to be a cartist. A cartist, there you go. He's a golf cartist. cartist. I, I write music like most of the people in this town, and um, you never know when you're going to get a song on the radio. Um, I was fortunate I wrote the theme song for the Denver Broncos when they won the Super Bowl, and I got a couple other songs that are being held by artists. When you get a hold by an artist, it means they just want the first chance at recording it. So there's cuts and there's holds. So you want to go from a hold to a cut. Cowboy Ken, I hate you. I'm a Carolina Panthers fan, and y'all oh, beat you? us in that All Super right. Bowl. Son of a gun. Let's go down over here. Into this barn looking structure over here, which yeah. is called the Mill Studios back in the day. And you this had, is between 17th and 18th Avenue. You had Alabama in here recording most of their albums. You actually had Billy Ray Cyrus recorded Aki Breaking Heart in this building. Do you know where the recording studio is actually located? Well, it's been it's been carved up into different rooms right now, but Has the it? whole thing was a studio. And I did not know, as a guy who worked on Music Row for a while, I had no idea that building right there was what you just saw, told us, a recording studio that Alabama recorded many of their great 1980s albums. Now this house on the corner you're here is actually where the Allman Brothers grew up when they were kids. And their mother brought them up from Georgia, and uh, the Allman Brothers lived in here. And everybody wanted to be by Music Row. They wanted to live and breathe and play Music Row. Do you blame them? going down 18th here because there's a studio I want to show y'all. Hey, you said y'all. I love it. See, I'm a hybrid now. I'm going y'all. <laughs> and I actually know there's a y'all and all y'all. Apparently there's a difference. <laughs> and this guy, Cowboy Ken, is kind of famous around here. I, I didn't realize how famous you were until I was telling someone that we were going to be doing this and they're like, man, that guy's everywhere. Lots of big, tall buildings now around Nashville that this aren't here. This building is actually owned by Kenny Chesney. And his manager. Oh, his manager is Dale Moore. Chesney. 
checking out Music Row in Style, courtesy of Nashville Golf and Car Tours and Shuttle. And I understand, Cowboy Ken, that you've got artists who use you to go around Music Row because they don't want to deal with coming down here in a car. We've taken tons of artists here. They, uh, they actually prefer it. And we've seen many artists just walking down the street. We saw Ricky Skaggs the other day. Uh, John Rich came out of this studio we're about to see with his guitar. I actually just ran into Bart Butler, who is the producer for Trace Atkins and John Pardee on the way over here. So this one right here is Round Hill Music. It was famous for people like Mac Davis. I don't know if you guys know Mac Davis. Yeah. But... Never made love till I made it with you. And also, yeah, hooked on a feeling of yeah, round hill music. Round hill music. Uh, Mac Davis actually had a hand in getting Alan Jackson a record deal. And you can see these are current number one hits right now. You've got uh, Aaron Morris, you've got Dustin Lynch, and Thomas Rick. Do you know the Mac Davis Alan Jackson score? I will listen in a minute, but right now I'm going to tell you who owns the studio oh, now. Oh, it's Stephen oh. Tyler who owns that studio. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, oh. Stephen Tyler has a country band. Now this, this unassuming house on the corner, this is the home to the management of the gentleman who has 62 number one hits. Do you know who that is? He's a cowboy from Texas. And uh, he's a true cowboy. He was in a movie called Pure Country. Huh. And this is George Strait's head office. Is that Irv Wolf? You never know. There's a sign right there. Oh, there it is. Right there. Let me That's zoom there. in, show people that. Irv took a chance on George Strait. There it is. It's Irv for Irv would... Woolsey. And then the other one is, uh, who is that? Somebody? That's his staff people. Somebody with a last name Woolsey. They're not working today. Off today. Herb is a legendary character in this town, a good friend of mine. And uh, he manages also Leanne Womack in addition to George Strait. But George Strait and him have a handshake deal. Nothing on paper has ever been put down. And it, because because Herb believes so much in uh, George, he gave him a healthy percentage of what he has made over the years. And those handshake agreements are not just between those two. There have been other similar deals here in Nashville. Kind of a, a great thing. Yeah, we're going to go back on the main part of Music Row right now. All right, we're back on 17th, everybody. You'll see that a lot of real estate changes happening now. Houses down here have so much history. We're going to go to another legendary corner down here. There's SunTrust Studios right there. They have a special lounge at the top for all the artists to hang out and really? count their money. That's a bank in case you're not from this part of the South. Now this location here uh, was where Luke Holmes started out with Riser, Riser Records. Now we've got this place with the archway. This gentleman has sold more records than any other country artist in the world and uh, is right up there with regular pop artists. And this is the uh, home. When I say home, I mean the management company. This is the home of uh, Garth Brooks, and Major Bob was the guy who discovered him and put money in the guard when he was a shoe salesman, singing demos. One of his demos was Friends in Low Places, but the song that made Major Bob uh, actually put money into Garth Brooks, and they still have the same type of arrangement. Uh, handshake deal? Handshake too? deal, and um, was much too young to feel this damn old. And like I said earlier, it's one of our favorite songs, and it really got the attention of people like Major Bob and then eventually the record companies. 1989, the year for much too young. Now we're going to go down here and you've got, if you can show these people the W in the second floor window. Oh, there. Uh, I, 
can, and I know what that is, everybody. That is the symbol for one Waylon Jennings. That has been the Waylon Jennings head office for 45 years. Lost him in 2002. Diabetes. And he apparently wrote the Dukes of Hazard theme song uh, on a, a roll of toilet paper 20 minutes before he had to present it. Uh, this is a very interesting place right here. This is Ocean Way Studios. And back in the day, it was a church. As you can tell, it looks like a church. They, uh, there was a strange man out of Texas uh, named Tony Olama. He thought he could bring people back to life. And it, the story goes that he had his wife cryogenically frozen and put her in the basement and doing seances and getting more people into a cult-like environment, and which eventually attracted the attention of the law. And uh, he actually got uh, convicted of tax evasion and desecration of bodies and all that type of stuff. Threatened to kill a federal judge. And so he went to jail for a long time actually federal prison, and Ocean Way became a famous studio, and Belmont College took it over and hired the best producers they could find, and that's attracted the attention of Aretha Franklin, Linda Ronstead, and later on Keith Urban, we got Luke Bryan, uh, Brad Paisley does all this stuff. We've seen Brad Paisley walking in and out of here, and um, it basically is one of the top studios in the world. Bon Jovi was here actually last year recording, had his tour bus parked up here. We're going to go a bit farther down Music Row and see a couple more things, but thanks for staying with us, and thanks to Yell.com for hanging out with us. Yes, we enjoy it. Thank you for taking time. Again, how do, what, if people come to Nashville, where do they easily find you? Um, you can find me on my personal Facebook. is Cowboy Ken with a K, so it's Cowboy with a K, Ken with a K. And we've got a brand-new website coming out on Monday, which is tour-nashville.com. So check it out. Uh, let us know when you're coming down. We'll save you a spot on the golf cart. But what if you don't want to do the whole go into a website or Facebook? Is there an office or a location people can find you? You can come to all my PR people are at 707 18th Avenue and you can check out uh, come to our offices down there and that's, that's where we can pick you all up and we can get some pictures done and all that type of good stuff. You know I get a roll to you every time you say the word y'all, right? Y'all. Because yeah. <laughs> you're a songwriter. I'm a, I'm a y'all writer. Hey y'all. Yeah. That's a great, uh, great name for a website. Yeah, thank you. We've been around over 20, 25 years now, y'all.com. Really? Well, I was going to ask you when you got that website. I've had it since 2002. Originally created, in case y'all don't know this, and I did say y'all intentionally there, originally created by Cox Media out of Atlanta, Georgia. They started at y'all.com and then we were able to kind of work a deal out. Actually, the first website Cox Media ever sold was to work through. And, uh, yeah, you can hold it. Yeah, okay, I'll hold it. So, thank y'all for being a part again. We're with Cowboy Ken here on Music Road, getting a good quick, quick tour of which you can come here and experience firsthand. This cart holds how many people? We can take seven people off the cart. Okay, seven And people. we've got a, a really good sound system. We're not playing it right now because of would probably interfere with the recording, but great A sound system. We typically play the music that we are talking about, so we add the musical component to that. Wow, uh, not hearing music because we're doing this virtual tour right now. Oh, it's part of our Southern Swing of the South Music Road, Nashville, Tennessee. Cowboy Ken with a K. Here we go right Honestly, you said that a couple times, and I don't know how else you could spell Ken. Have you seen Ken? I mean, have you seen Ken spell? I've never seen it with a C. <laughs> There's Luke Combs. Man, we're bringing out all the hits Luke today. Combs, and again, these banners are a tribute to the songwriters because that's what this section of town is all about. And that's really what makes the industry is the writers. So you don't have to be a star to be to be a star, basically like that. There's star writers. That's all they do is write. Um, this is a recent song uh, that Luke Combs did, but maybe about two years ago. Uh, a friend of mine, Trent Tomlinson, wrote a song for a gentleman named Brett Young, and it's called In Case You Didn't Know. And that became the BMI Song of the Year. And that was written in Mexico, and it was uh, finished down here. And uh, we've heard the original recordings. And every time they get a number one hit, they have a big party, and it's called the number one party. So Now, I see that sign was there. A couple that years ago. For that. I'm, I'm looking, I'm zooming in now. Save Music Road. What, what is that all about? Well, one of the problems in Nashville is that there's little protection for historical places and Music Row has so much history and the developers 
have been able to come in and throw their money around and take down famous places in this town, famous little dive bars, and you know, it's kind of a shame. The wedding, little wedding chapel's gone right now, and uh, you know, Ray Stevens' studio, we just drove by a, a lot where they're gonna build a big high rise where Ray Stevens used to be. So, Save Music Row is a movement. Uh, it's getting more traction. It's just taking more time than we thought. And even Studio B, where we drove by, that Chris Stapleton recently recorded, and it was saved by the people like Dina Carter and other artists stepped up and put their own money to save it from demolition. And, but it took a, a movement, a private movement, to save it. So we're hoping that the government of the town and the state uh, realizes that this is a place that needs to be saved and basically preserved. So let's go up the street and see a couple more things. Are we ready to roll? Yes, sir. Right. Rolling on. We're rolling. Using the road. We're rolling. Can I tell my Alan Jackson story? Yes. All right, so Alan Jackson was an unknown guy who was a good singer, good songwriter, but he was unknown. He was a cook down He worked at TNN, too, in the mill room, which is where I used to work. But before he got any kind of fame, his wife was a airline stewardess, hostess, whatever they're called. And one time, I, I may be wrong. I said Mac Davis. It might have been Glenn Campbell. I'll, I'll take it back. It was Glenn Campbell was on a flight, and Alan Jackson's wife was a... A, a stewardess on the wet flight. She said, "Oh, my husband's a songwriter." He said, "Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, cool. Well, maybe, uh, maybe you can send me a tape, or maybe she had one in her pocket." And that's how Alan Jackson got discovered. It was because of his wife working on an airline. How about that? That's cool. I love that story. Right over here, folks, we've got uh, a couple of amazing songwriters, friends of mine, Bobby Pinson and Clint Daniels, and they're just good old boys. And we'll see them hanging out in the bar. And having a beer and they just are talented beyond talented and you can see that's a banner for a number one song but Clint Daniels has written Broken Hearts Will for Joe Nichols he writes a lot of John Pardee music Bobby Pinson wrote uh, Courtesy of Red White and Blue and he's got probably 10 to 12 number one hits and now what is this building this is Seagull Music and it's okay. owned by Brad Paisley actually huh. well Brad Paisley showed up in a parking lot Bobby Pinson had a party in the parking lot and Brad Paisley showed up on guitar and that was just a little while back but that's the type of thing that happens uh, just randomly on Music Row. You'll see people just show up and play music. And you can see these signs are a little bit windblown, but you've got one of my favorite songs called One Man Band by Old Dominion. Thanks for uh, tuning in to y'all.com. Yeah. Now, when people come on the tour, do they need to book in advance? Uh, you can book through the website or give us a call or send me a message through, uh, through Facebook. And what is the cost? Uh, typically, tours pay $45 a head for the full tour. And that's almost an hour and a half long an tour? An hour and a half long. And um, we can customize. We can go longer. We had a group today that ended up paying for more time or just we like hanging out with them, and we went for four hours. How about that? And we give you discounts out. If you go pay overtime, we'll give you a good discount on that. Is this... We just want people to remember Nashville, and a lot of people say, oh, this is the coolest thing we've done. Now, is this a battery-powered or a... This is a gas-powered gas golf, golf cart. We're going to turn around. They actually had a gas leak on the street, unfortunately. We're going to do the back alley tour. Okay. So it's kind of a rainy day in Nashville, but um, normally it, it's pretty hot around this time. We went through in the last month a record streak of uh, 90, 90 degree plus days. Sneak through the back lane, and these, these back lanes are kind of famous too because a lot of times people would be drinking at the local little dive bars and they would want to get home somehow, and so they would take the back lane. And it kind of works out good for them at that time. Looping 
back. We're going to loop back to where we started on Music Row, but I hope you guys have enjoyed us uh, having on the golf cart today. And, um, yeah, we got to stop. I, I promised people that they'd see Carly Pierce. So oh, if you'll, okay. you know where that picture is. Yeah, it's right when we started off. It's down there by the... Uh, oh, the uh, right by Studio B? Yeah. That area. Okay. Now, what is this called over here? That is Villa Place. There, that's a, a pretty trendy little area now for yeah. restaurants. Yeah, it's Villa Place. It's Edge Hill. Um, should we watch the show naturally? They have something called Edge Hill Records. Huh. And uh, we're going to go past uh, Smack Music. And you'll see this guy, Shane McAnally. Let's see. Shane McAnally is the son of a famous songwriter named Mac McAnally, and Shane McAnally is an amazing songwriter. He is the host of a show called Songland. So if you watched, uh, if you've seen Songland on TV, that's Shane McAnally. If you've got jo Josh Osborne, you've got Sam Hunt Music's been over here, we've got Morgan Wallen across the street, Big Loud, Greg Wiseman. Wrap it up with Carly this, Pierce. This is a, a tragedy right here. This corner was Bobby's Idol Hour, which was there for 35 years. Dive, famous dive bar where Red Solo Cup was written. Toby Keith would like hang out. And Tim McGraw. And they had dollar bills on the ceiling and everything like that. We tried our best to save it. That's part of when the Save Easy Road movement started because also there was a wedding chapel here. And uh, they had a, an Elvis. Elvis would come and marry you. We've seen Elvis several times in Mary. Sure, it was the real Elvis. Yeah. And you've got a lot of entertainment based companies around here. This is the church section of. Here was the home of MCA Records. I'm sure they've been gone 20 years now, but that, that was built in the 90s for MCA. Here you have music group, that's a fan. That is where uh, Somewhere on a Beach was written at Pure Music. There's the old giant records built up there, on the Play Walker and others. Carly herself, we're gonna go visit her. Uh, she's having a rough time these days, so I'll let her find out the hard way. Master Phonics is actually, you see loud recording right there. Cowboy Ken. Once That's again, it. this Facebook website and more to find you. Yep. Cowboy Chicken Ken with a K. Cowboy Ken with a K. And tour-nashville.com coming to you on Monday and Tuesday. We're getting a new website put up. And now we're coming up to Curbwood Entertainment. King and Country is actually a pretty famous uh, group being on this label. And, uh, I drive by this sign and everybody comments, oh, King and Country. This was actually built for Garth Brooks and he turned it down because he thought it looked too fancy and so they moved him down the street that we saw earlier. Now we're coming up to Carl right. Pierce and Lee Bryce. Well, there you go. Ken, thank you very much. We've had absolutely enjoyed our time. Cowboy Ken is how you can find him. Make Cowboy Ken part of your music road journey when you come to Nashville. You can send us a message on Facebook and also check us out on our new website, tour-nashville.com. And thanks again to y'all.com. I'm impressed that you got that website and the history behind it. And thank you guys very much. And thank y'all for joining us <laughs> on the Golf Cart Tour. We appreciate it. All right, as promised. Have a great day. We're gonna wrap up now with yours truly, John Rawl. Lee Bryce and Carly Pierce on Music Row. We're on 18th Avenue. We've had a 
just a great time. And we hope you've had a good time being a part of our fun. And there she is. There's Lee Bryce and Carly Pierce. Hopefully you can see there as they have their number one song, I Hope You're Happy Now. Thanks again to Cowboy Ken. Have a great weekend, everybody. And share this video and make sure Cowboy Ken and his business, Nashville Golf Cart Tours and more are part of your Nashville experience. Thank y'all. We'll see you later.